Hello and welcome to the somewhat cheesily titled Facing Your Fear. Uh, this is a, a, a video to accompany an article that's currently held on my website where I'm looking at deconstructing um, the artificial intelligence behind the bots and fear. So, a little bit about the game. Um, it's a first-person shooter that was originally released on the PC in 2005 and then also on PS3 and Xbox 360 in 2006. Um, developed by Monolith Games, it focuses on a member of a special forces unit who has been sent in to deal with a series of telepathically controlled soldiers who are going AWOL. But while you do this, weird things start happening, mostly revolving around little girls running in front of you and doing creepy little things like that. Where did she go? Also seems to be getting into your head slightly. So the whole pastiche of walking away around corridors and you don't see where they're going um, seems quite common. But this results in awesome things. It seems to have, have some sort of impact on why you can do slow motion attacks such as that one and as this one which is brilliant for shooting windows. The game ultimately jumps between shooting and scary bits. And then more shooting! And then we'll have another scary bit, such as this, which made me not want to wash for about a week. Um, ultimately, it's quite a fun game. Um, it had a few issues with pace, I think, largely towards the end of the second act and start of the third act. But you can usually pick it up now on Steam for maybe a couple of pounds. And there's also two sequels, so I'd certainly encourage you to check it out. Smashing! So, Dr. Thompson, pray tell, how does the artificial intelligence work? Well, it's really reliant on just three states and a plan. Yes, that's it. I'm deadly serious. We have three states, which are in a finite state machine, go to, hidden to a certain location, using a smart object in the environment and playing an animation. That is it. In fact, use smart object, according to the authors, is also just an animation uh, node. We also have a plan, and the plan helps us decide where to go and how to actually use that finite state machine to do something interesting in the game. So we have a planning system which is figuring out sequences of actions throughout that finite state machine, ultimately to avoid threats. You, me, anybody who plays this game is ultimately a threat. And what happens is that the planning system needs to figure out what way to navigate through that finite state machine. And as great as it is, it is completely useless unless Hannibal figured out something in advance. Now, to plan in an artificial intelligence, it's actually very similar for human beings or bears. We're trying to figure out a number of actions ahead of where we are in the world. Now, in computing, um, one of the earliest examples is the strips formulism, which you can see here. This is the Stanford Research Institute problem solvers um, language that was derived in the early 1970s. And what we have is a series of facts, and these facts tell us what there is about the world and what is important to us. It also tells us what our goal is and what actions we can do and their um, logic behind them in order to either be allowed to execute them or the resulting effect. Now, this has been adopted by and large in the fear game. Um, each of the non-player characters is given a range of different types of goals and actions that they can execute in the world. Now, these the goal selection, what goal is most important to them at any point in time, is dictated by a number of things. Um, not only do they have a range of sensors which allow them to see what is currently happening in the world, um, many of the bots also have shared knowledge on a kind of blackboard style system. But lastly, there is a squad manager where numbers of characters who are close to each other um, it will attempt to create some squad-like behaviour by telling them what their goal is they should achieve. Okay, so let's see some of this AI in action. Um, this skirmish here is from quite early on in the game. It's actually one of the first times that you really come across the AI. And there's, I think there's about six or seven bots wandering around this open area. So with my amazing stealth-like ability and Hulk-like strength, I will kill him in one blow. However, what's now happening is that one of the bots has realised he's not checking in and is in, is actually searching for me and has promptly discovered me. Now that I've been discovered, of course, um, the squad behaviour AI will now be telling all the other characters to start heading towards this location because they know I'm somewhere nearby. Now I've managed to pick him off, but in the meantime there'll be other characters coming in. Now one of the things they can do is as soon as they're exposed, such as this guy here, they can find ways to try and remove that threat, because that's the threat that's being presented. Hence he jumped over that barrel and then hid behind cover. Now he's now thinking he's got more of a chance to take me on, and the priorities have shifted towards a more of offensive strategy. I still don't know where you went, where's he went? Oh, another guy here, that's not good. 
the key thing to remember is that they're always planning. They're always coming up with new behaviours. And, well, for example, what happened here is the squad behaviour is now suggesting that when one of them was hiding behind cover, the other one could push forward. Of course, I am a killing machine, and I can also use slow-mo powers, which means I can do awesome stuff like that. So what we've seen so far is that the AI is actually quite dynamic. They're continually reassessing what their goals are, and then they run plans in order to find a way to kind of remove the threat um, as quickly as possible, whether it's diving behind cover or pressing up and actually trying to take me out. So courtesy of my amazing stealth skills, I take out one NPC, and the other one be immediately begins to plan. His goals are shifting, um, and he tries to get to cover. Now, I've not got an awful lot of health here, which may actually have an, an impact on why this guy's now jumped out of a window like he's Rambo. It's now two against one. I'm outnumbered. I don't have much health left. This could go very badly for me. So I managed to take one out. The other characters obviously recognise that. He's, fall he's fallen back again. Um, constantly moving to cover, trying to press me. Um, it turns into this weird little gun battle. Which I think I've almost got the upper hand here. Until I pop round the corner. And lo and behold, ow, I'm dead. Now, I've returned back to this earlier skirmish because I wanted to play it differently. I thought what would happen is if I take this guy out, make enough noise about it, and then run away, go and hide somewhere. Now, the thing is, no threats are going to be presented to any of the characters because none of them have seen me yet. However, they're now aware of my presence, and the larger squad uh, behaviour manager is now going to tell them to start searching but of course the great thing is it just tells them what goals to achieve and it's up to them how they do it this can actually result in some interesting and more complex um squad behaviors which occur completely by accident well, maybe not by accident, that seems a bit insulting. Rather, it's because of intelligent design. The characters have such a large um, branching factor, the number of actions that they can execute, and the use of a planning system to effectively search that state space means that we can have a large range of different behaviours occurring throughout the game. Now I went off and decided to hide, thinking, oh, here we go, I can sneak up on this little fella, and I'm going to win. However, he spots me really quickly and throws a grenade to help him move into a more defensive position and put me on the back foot. Then when I try to flank round, a couple of them are ready for me and I get wiped out. And here we go. I think I'll do this one last time. This is one of the fun things about it is I played this same skirmish about 10 times on the hardest difficulty and you're always getting something fresh. So I think I'm okay and then this guy manages to flank round behind me, figuring out that I must have been near where the dead body was. I then come back out have a look around, no one's here. I see these two fellas and immediately start to attack. Um, I actually nearly get taken out by this guy. But even as I pull back, these guys have pushed forward and they're now setting up a defensive position. This is sort of the key to beating them, is you've got to keep moving. Um, and then really utilise the slow motion, because one, it's very helpful, and two, it just looks cool. So while you can trick them, I would always play on the side of caution, um, because you can never know, based on their action space, what particular moves they'll do to take you out. Just like that. So this is a general overview of the artificial intelligence behind the non-player characters in Fear. Um, what I would advise if you're interested in more is to pop along to my website over at t2thompson.com where this video is actually accompanying a much larger article where I go into much greater detail, um, not only for uh, passers-by, but particularly to my students in my game behaviour class. In the meantime, uh, thanks for listening and I hope you enjoyed it. Sweet. I'm going to go play some more fear now. Hmm. <laughs>